in a land where corn is king, farmed by America's best, and every bushel matters. Corn Warriors, it's personal. <laughs> Wasn't looking forward to planting season until you guys showed up. Well, we're down at Dubois, Indiana for season two of Corn Warriors. We had to bow to the king last year, Mr. Hula, AKA Zeus. He kind of put a butt whooping on everybody, but start of a new year, playing fields level again, and we got a new uh, participant. Randy Dowdy, AKA Achilles. It's be a little bit more pressure for David to, to stay on top. Zeus is David, because he's kind of a god. You got me as self-proclaimed Spartacus. <laughs> I, I, it was a hard decision between Spartacus and Maximus. You know, we're still working on a name for uh, Mr. Swanson. Dan, since everybody likes him, I think he's the good guy, so uh, we're gonna call him Aphrodite's. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. <laughs> what we learned from 2017, you know, our fertility issues, we, we've seen some things that really responded on a pure accident. So we've, once again, changed our whole fertility program. A lot of stuff, to grow corn is basically against the grain of what everybody else was taught or told. I don't know, we'll see. 2017 crop was about 40 bushel better than we've ever had. You know, I don't know if we had a creek bottom or a river bottom that didn't average over 300, 320 last year. I mean, just last year was just a phenomenal corn crop across the whole board for us. We knew we'd have a good crop, but we didn't expect it to be that good because of the grain fill, the heavy weight of the kernels. I mean, test weight has been phenomenal. We've not hauled any corn under 63 pound test weight on everything we've hauled so far. Our ROI was, was pretty darn good. We had our farm highest yield average and our farm highest yield ever for the contest. We also done it on basically our lowest input cost. It's a good year, good year. Let's hope 18's the same way. I'm Sean Cobb, I'm from Dubois, Indiana. My job on the farm basically is getting him where he needs to go. I drive the um, tractor and the auger cart, which I absolutely hate. As of now, it's May 2nd. Uh, we've been cold and wet all year. Ground ain't 100% right, but they're calling for rain tomorrow. We're gonna go ahead and stick some corn in the ground. Uh, 2018 so far is coming along pretty decent. Hooked up seed tender and had a kind of a screw up there, overloaded our seed tender, which we lost about an hour there to get it unplugged. and. And so now we're, we were actually going to try to spray, but we got about 20 mile an hour wind now, so we can't spray today. Normally we quit 24 hours before rain, but we don't have a whole lot planted right now, so, uh, and we need to get these hills planted early. So uh, we're going to risk it and go ahead and plant tonight. We just looked at the radar and there's a lot of red, pretty big swat going through. Um, we know that there is rain coming, but we're going against our, our thoughts. The risk is definitely worth the yield right now. We could probably get an inch, inch and a half out of this. so. I just hope that the radar is wrong. This could be bad for us.
For over 65 years, Brandt has been helping growers achieve better results. We bring the very best plant health and fertilizer solutions to the farm. Through research and innovation, we help growers implement new practices that improve the quality and abundance of food, fuel, and fiber around the world. Brandt, professional agriculture. Visit Brandt.co for more information. Why ain't he piling the litter up? Because you don't want to. Why not? He gets paid by the hour. He work for you or you work he's, for him? He's pretty good at hell. But he's got a one track mind. What's he thinking about? Getting home. <laughs> How long is it taking for these trucks to get here? Hour and 45 minute round trip. So pretty much y'all sitting here doing nothing. But we still get paid. You still get paid, I understand that, but you ain't really doing a whole lot, right? Uh, we cleaned up the bushes around your pile. I appreciate it. Well, can you do one more thing for me? Yeah. I understand why they got, you got a little ramp for the trucks to back up here on, but this is the Dave Hula pile. Cause I'd like for this to be in a pile, okay. so water will shed off of it. Yeah, I can dome it up. Dave Hula is the guy that wins the corn contest every year. This chicken litter's got his name written all over it. We're going to unload all the chicken litter we can in that field, and we're going to do our dang best to whip his tail. It's going to be on. Stuart, did you bring this rain? What was it, about a month now? Every day? Probably a little longer. I've been trying to burn four stump piles for the uh, last month and then can't, can't do it. More rain coming, unfortunately. You see it blowing up on the phone. It's been doing this for three weeks, almost four. Miserable. We've been in this field for eight days. Still can't get a plan. We need to be moving somewhere else. Can't move. It rained there, it rained here. About the time we get tillage done here, it rains. About the time we get ready to start planting here, it rains. We got wet spots over there we couldn't plant, so we didn't spray it off. See, we got beans coming up. That shouldn't be happening. That top section up there where you see the top hill, there's about 25 acres in this field. Still not planting. Losing fertility, losing, you know, having erosion problems. Having, losing our cover crops where we've planted them and they've lasted, losing our weed control. Now we've got issues trying to get seed to soil contact, just trying to get it planted. So, not fun. Can you see that part number that's on the top, that piece of white? Would that have a part number on it? I can call up there and see if I got it. This part's. Can you look up, uh, I got a planter, it's got a control. A controller of some sort on it that's messed up. What size planter is it? Eight, 1700? It's a 1725. It's a 12 row 30. Can you hold one second, sir? Yeah, man. Hello? Hello? Hey, this is Melissa calling about your federal student loan. <laughs> you have been approved for reduction <laughs> plans that include complete forgiveness. I was looking to see if it may be a sub number from a number to another number or something like that. But I'm going to look. We're going we're gonna to go to the machine itself. I don't think it should make that noise. I don't know how water could get in it the way it's sealed. Now, y'all sure that's what's wrong with it? We thinking it is. I ain't got one. It's $2,000. How much? $2,000. $2,000. Oh. It's killing the whole yeah, system yeah. when you plug it in. And it don't work no more. Just trying to get planted this field. Because I need to be at my house planting peanuts. You know what date is, right? Yep. Yeah, because that's my whole planting monitor. I mean, I can't tell how fast we're planting, vacuum. I can't tell seed population, nothing. Technology's great when it works. Yep. You can't find one today, I can have you one in the morning. Okay, uh, I'll let you know. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you, man. Bye. Supposedly they got one in Bainbridge at the store there, a new one. Might as well get out of the rain, boys. Um, I got a little 
boy in the back, Eastern. He's along for the ride. He enjoys uh, going with Daddy. First things out of his mouth every day is on go, on go. So it makes the Daddy's heart swell. What are you doing? Oh, I'm up my new planter up here on these freaking mountains. What are you doing now? You tearing up your planter? <laughs> yeah, crossing ditches and bending, breaking roll cleaners off. You name it, I'm doing it. But I wanted to call you and see how it was in God's country. Corn looks good. Uh, corn looks, well, really good, actually. Yeah, rub it uh, in. Rub it in. You know, you're the face of agriculture right now you got you know that, <laughs> you are. they want they want you to be on the cover of magazines you, you look at me and they're like who's that gray-headed grandpa <laughs> you're so funny no i need a rain to move in nutrients down you need to do more than just nutrients to compete with us now well, i know it <laughs> i know it no doubt <laughs> no uh, i'm glad your corn looks good all the dry land just has the last four weeks took a beating when it gets rain, it comes out of the world. It comes out of yeah. being twisted yeah. up, and now it's all different heights and jacked up. But I'm not behind on anything but planting. I need you to come down here and cast the demon out of this planter I got. This summer gun is dragging. <laughs> all right, man. We'll take care of yourself. Right, Don't be strange. See you, man. Take care. Yep. Bye. Kevin Cobb, come on, man. Kevin Cobb's farming up there where the land flows with milk and honey. You kidding? He's got unlimited manure, organic matter, three to five percent, river bottom ground that's basically got a, a water table six feet down. He could take his soil and fertilize mine. So uh, we're not farming in the best soils on the planet, but God made it. We work with it. We work hard and we do our part and he blesses us. Even an inch rain, we've seen a crust and everything we planted before that has the potential to seal off and everything that we do could be negated by that one, one inch rain there. This weather's just been really crazy. I mean, it's time to get the corn in the field, definitely. We got rain today, a couple inches, then this week it's supposed to rain again. And who knows when we're going to get back in because it's sunny a couple days to dry it up, but then rain's coming right behind it. It's all boils down to what Mother Nature wants to do. You know, I, I can't make it rain. You know, I can't make it stop flooding. So, you know, we're we're kind of behind the eight ball on on the weather deal. From where we're sitting at right now, in 1998, uh, over the Fourth of July weekend, my brother drowned about 100 yards from where we're at. He was uh, on a pontoon boat with some of his buddies there, and uh, he jumped off and tried to swim to shore, and he didn't make it. You know, every time you come up here, you kind of think about that. So, hell, it's been 20 years this year. It'll be that he's passed away. You win some, you lose some. I've been with Kevin on the farm for eight, 10 years, and I still haven't had a breakdown, so I feel like I'm doing good. I've cried every season. I, because it, it's stressful. I don't think people know, honestly, how stressful farming is. Just a lot of stress about this and that, and just, I don't know. I, I hope the kids want to do it, but if they don't, it's, yeah, I'll be upset, but I can understand, understand why they wouldn't, wouldn't pick the life of farming. Like most people, they go, week to week on a paycheck, not here. You go from year to year. So you're just hoping that Mother Nature gives you enough rain, perfect weather, and that the markets are good and everything comes together and you make a profit. Otherwise, as Kevin said, you just go bankrupt. You've got the kids, but who knows? Are they gonna wanna farm? Are they not gonna farm? It's a gamble. Everything is a gamble. You know, the farm ain't the most important thing anymore. You know, it's, it's kids and uh, and the wife and, and you know at the end of the day you know the farm don't give a crap if you're going to be around or not but you know your wife and kids do. My little Coco, God love her, I think she's the only one that really wants anything to do with the farm. Last night even though they had eye step testing the next day we went down to bring Kevin food at 10:30, and she goes mom can I just stay with dad? 
sure, stay with him. I said, you might be the only one to learn how to farm. I said, so while you're in there, you, be, you need to take advantage of it. She did and she fell asleep. <laughs> it's just nice to be able to get out in the fields finally. I mean, who would thought that we'd have to wait till the middle of May to start planting anything and playing softball. Softball is starting to kick in high gear here. Uh, the oldest daughter plays uh, middle school ball and I coach her travel team. I kind of cheated this last week and I probably should have been home working ground, but I'd rather watch softball than uh, playing corn. <laughs> well, that's kind of our motivation to keep working, to try to cram as much done and during the week. So weekends, you know, we can go play softball. As of now, we have two no-till entries planted. If we hit 443, you know, I don't know, I've never hit 500, but I think that's a bigger achievement than hitting 500 irrigated. There again, you know, there are different climate, different soil types, you know. Uh, we talk about uh, Achilles, you know, he, he got dealt some bad luck and, you know, he only went 400. You know, for him, I'm sure he considers that a failure. You know, all of us guys would be tickled pink to have that, but it just tells you how hard that that 443 is being non-irrigated. The thing about Randy is, well, his ground don't change much. I mean, as far as the temperature, I should say his temperature don't. When it rains down there, they, they can get back on their ground pretty quick. We're, you know, we're out for four or five days and we have to tile everything and he has to put pivots on everything. So it's, it's two different worlds that we live in here between us and him. Uh, I probably would quit farming if I had to get up four times a night to check pivots. <laughs> I like Dan, so I, I can't pick on Dan any. Uh, you know, like I said, I met him in Anaheim. He seems like a really, really good guy. You know, he's pretty quiet on Twitter. Some other guys like to talk a lot on Twitter. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you know, it's all about the farm average. The, the contest is fine and dandy. Well, you still got to make money. You know, it's all about being profitable. So, you know, we, we set pretty high goals last year. You know, naturally you try to be better every year. Yeah, I want 443. That's what I want. You know, I want the, I want the non-irrigated record. You take the irrigated guys, David and Randy, they didn't break that record until four or five years ago, you know, being under irrigation. So, to say if, if we could do that, that would be phenomenal for us. You know, I always said, you know, if you have a problem, what would Randy do? <laughs> That's what I always tell myself, what would Randy do? so dang wet, we're going to rut it up. Then if we can spray it, uh, get ready to start planting it. I want the pivot out of the way so we can spray it. Hey, you put this over there. There's some on this pallet. Don't do that. You're about to lose it. Why do y'all put them pallets on there sideways? They, they got it over there in the store. Why? Set it in that bay over. Peas coming out, we got coffee weed, pig weed, you name it. With five weeks worth of rain, it's like the toilet has been flushed. 
know, no solar radiation, no energy being produced, no, you know, minimum sugars. It's got to hurt yield. I mean, no way you could be naive enough to think that it didn't. <laughs> Hello? No. You can move this pivot shortly. Cycle the power on and off. What y'all decided? I don't think we got a choice. Just something else to add to drama. Bring the voltage meter over here. Ain't no power. I didn't know that lit up. First time I tried to move it in about two weeks. It's obviously been hit by lightning at some point. I have to come out here and find an underground wire that goes from there to there, find out where it's broke, and do a repair. The joys of farming. You can see the corn here. I mean, considering that it's had 15 plus inches in the last three weeks, still got a pretty good color to it. In this field, we planted at least four different commercial hybrids, not just about winning the contest, making some money on some production acres. Uh, we plant all seed companies. I mean, we, we test them all. We don't just trust what the salesmen tell us. We, we try to verify that it's gonna work on our farm and that the performance is there. Of late, for the last three or four years, we've been winning with Agrigold. Uh, as far as nutrients are concerned, Brant products has been a, a big part of it uh, on our soybean and corn yield success. Everybody tries to figure out what we do, so we try to buy things from different places. There's so much nobody can just absolutely pinpoint us on what we're doing. So we'll start fertigating, but the last thing I want to do is apply water and it run off. So I got to get the nutrients down in the profile. So I need some dry weather for a week to 10 days to be able to start pumping some more fertilizer in the out here to, to refuge this crop and, and to salvage this crop. Some of David's friends. Dang it, cut! <laughs> 